Welcome to Spirit-Filled Catholic Ministries. I'm Mary Beth Winchell. Enjoy the video. I just want to start with a testimony. I, I don't know why, but this has been coming to me all week to share, so I'm just going to share it with you. Um, this happened to me a few years ago, three or four years ago. I went to a healing conference, and on, after the way, on the way back, I never went up for healing because the lines were so long, but on the way back, I said, you know what? I've had the strong hold for my entire adult life. I've had heart flutters. They were, um, and would come and give me a rush in the head every time. And it would just be like my heart, like a heart palpitation or a flutter of a room. And I went to a cardiologist probably third, 20 years ago, 20. And he said, you know what? They're not doing you any harm. Don't worry about them. If they get bad, come back and I'll give you something for it. Well, they were so bad that I couldn't, that I would go to bed and they would be constant, like one after another. And it was so disturbing to me. But um, I've had them so long. And I just want to, this is my testimony. I want to tell you this. After I left that healing conference, I said, why am I living with it? When I don't have to, I can make a decision. And I made a decision on the way home from Colorado. We were driving from Colorado. I told my husband, I'm, I'm just not going to live with them anymore. And I'm go I made a decision to get rid of those in my life, to be healed. I made a decision to receive God's healing. I, I am telling you, I am free of those, and I have been for years, for two years now. But it was, I, I want to tell you this because it was a struggle. They wouldn't just leave. You know, when you've got something that you've had for a long time, that devil has a strong hold over you. He's not going to just get out because you made a decision. You've got to make a decision and, and be firm on that decision. Because when that, when that flutter would come, the devil's so conniving that I would actually enjoy it. There was something about it. And God said, the Holy Spirit had told me, never once let it happen. I had to make a de decision to never once let it happen. In other words, every time that heart flutter came, I said, nope, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. I rebuke you, heart flutter, out loud every single time it happened every time. And God said, be relentless because that heart flutter is relentless. So I had to be relentless. And I just want to share this with you because I feel like we tolerate things that we've had forever. We tolerate arthritis as if it's just something we're stuck with. And we are not. We are not. We don't have to be. It's your decision, not God's. It's your decision to be healed. This is so huge. But God's already decided. God's already provided healing. Jesus already took the cross. Jesus is. So I just wanted to share that with you before I get into this word today, because I have a word for you. I have a little, I have something that I want to share with you, and it's about our value. And we're going to get into the word and share it and open it up too and discuss it. But I want to share this picture with you. It's a painting that my daughter did when she was in, I don't know, grade school, middle school. And I'm selling this painting today for $1,000. If you want it, you can have it. Does anyone want it? Does anyone want this beautiful self-portrait of my daughter for $1,000? You know what? Our value, the value of this painting is determined by what someone will pay for it. I can say this thing is worth $1,000, but if no one's willing to pay me $1,000, it's not worth $1,000. It might be worth it to me, but it's not worth it to anybody else. I can, I, can, I can put a price tag on it, and I can determine the value of this, but it's, but it's the value of anything is, is only determined by what someone else is willing to pay for it. You have no... I bought a car, uh, a Highlander, and I paid, uh, I bought it used. I paid $15,000 for this Toyota Highlander. We loved it. It, it was originally priced $20,000, five-year-old. It was five years old at the time. And it was originally priced at $20,000, but it was not worth $20,000. You know why? Because no one would pay $20,000 for it. What something is worth is what you're going to give up in order to get it. What are you willing to give up? in order to get this. We were willing to give up $15,000 to receive that car. 
because that car to us was worth $15,000. Wasn't worth 20,000, no one wanted it for 20,000, so it was not worth 20,000. God was willing to pay a price for you that is a, a value that is beyond measure. Your value to God is beyond measure. You can't measure what you're worth. You will try to, but you have no right to determine what you are worth, and we do it every day. You don't have the right to determine your worth because you, weren't, you don't know your correct value, but God knows your value because your value is what he was willing to pay for you. And he paid the price that is beyond measure, and it's the price of his son. You're worth more to God than you will ever be able to add up. And he wants you to know it. He wants to know what you're worth and to live as if that's if, as if you know what your worth is. You're worth everything to God because he paid everything for you. Listen to this. I want to read from 1 Peter 1, verse 18 and 19. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold and silver, which lose their value. It was paid with the precious blood of Christ, the sinless spotless lamb of God. God paid a ransom to save you. You might not understand this. Why would God pay for me? What does that mean? But God says in his word that he paid the price. Why? Because we were lost and had sold our souls, every single one of us, through Adam in the garden to the devil. God gave Adam everything. Adam gave it all to the devil. Um, I can prove this in his word, and I'm not sure I have time to do that, but I may. Ransom means, the word ransom means a sum of money or other payment demanded or paid for the release of a prisoner. Okay, this is so good. But God didn't just want us as his own. He wanted us legally, permanently. He had to pay the price for us. Your value is not set by you. Your value is not set by somebody else. Your value is not determined by how you feel, what you possess, what your job is, what you own, what others think of you. That, is, that does not determine your value, although we let it determine our value every single day. When we're feeling good, we feel good about ourselves. We value ourselves. When we feel bad about ourselves, we feel worthless. We think our, our worth is worthless. But when we feel good about ourselves, we, we feel like we're worth something. When others think highly of us, we feel good about ourselves. We have a high value. But our value is not determined by ourselves or what anyone else thinks. Our value is determined by God because he paid the price. Now, you might be saying, there's another word in the Bible that says redeemed. God redeemed us. The word redeemed, he's our redeemer. The word redeemed means to buy off or pay, to clear by payment. God cleared our account by payment. Think, think of it this way. Let's say you owe somebody a million dollars. Or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Let's say you owe somebody a thousand dollars. If God, if, if, let's say I owe the bank for my car. I have $1,000 left on that car. I owe $1,000. What if somebody came by and paid the bank for you a million dollars? They cleared your account and they paid the price. Not only did they pay it, but they overpaid it. That's what Jesus did for us. He overpaid on our account. So you might be saying bought. What do you mean God bought us? I just want to share a few scriptures in the Bible where it says that Jesus bought us. And Adam and Eve renounced the power and authority over the earth that God had given them. And Satan took their place and became the prince of this world, the king of the ungodly. And Jesus actually even says it in, in, in John 14, where he says, the prince of this world is coming for me. I, I don't owe him anything. I don't have to obey him. But to show how much I love you and to show how much I love the Father, I am going to put myself in his hands. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, for you've been purchased at a price. 1 Corinthians 7.23, you've been purchased at a price. 
do not become slaves again to human beings. We have been purchased, and the purchase price is beyond um, understanding. John 12, 31, now is the time of judgment on this world. The, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. Jesus came to drive out the ruler of this world. You know, this, this, the reason I'm taking the time to talk about this is because, and, and to, to show you some scriptures, we're going to go into some scriptures on how, who is a child of God and how we know we're children of God. Because when we don't know who we are, we are subject to the things of this world. Second Timothy 2 says that they may return to their senses out of the devil's snare where they are entrapped by him for his will. We were all, before Christ, without Jesus, we are all trapped in this world, trapped in the snare of the devil. That's what that scripture says. This was me. You know, I didn't know that I was trapped. I didn't feel like I was trapped. I thought I was part of the world, making my way into the world. But we are, without Christ, we are trapped and enslaved, <laughs> worried about what others thought of me. I was always worried about what others thought of me. I was scared of my own shadow. I was afraid of people. I was shy. I regretted everything I ever said. I never seemed to say the right thing. I didn't know I was trapped. I didn't know there was more for me. I didn't know there was better for me until Jesus. And that's what Jesus wants to do for all of us, to, to redeem us, to free us, to bring us to this new place. Ephesians 2, 1 through 2. I'm sorry I'm going through a lot of scripture, but you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you once lived following the age of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is at work in the disobedient. I want to just read that again, because this is all, all of us before Christ. We were dead in our transgressions. You know, when God told Adam and Eve, You're, you take this fruit, you will die. They died, we all died, right? We were all dead in our transgressions and sins before Jesus. Because that is how we once lived, following the prince following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedient. We just didn't know it, but we literally belong to him, and Jesus bought us back. Um, I just want to say that this little picture that I have here cannot determine its value. I can put it on the market for $1,000, but it can't decide what it's worth. The person who buys this determines its worth. God determined your worth because he was willing to pay for his, his son to pay for you. God proved our value by giving the one who is beyond value. His value is beyond measure, which means our value is beyond measure. Who can measure the value of Jesus Christ? He is, it, it is uh, beyond measure, and so are you. Your value is beyond measure. It's not like the stock market that goes up and down. It's not like, you know, I just want to mention uh, Pope Benedict. When Pope Benedict stepped down, this is so rare for anyone ever. When we're in ministry, we get so much value from our ministry and being whoever we are. If you're a pitcher uh, from a, in a, um, I mean, a famous baseball player or, or a famous basketball player, you get a lot of value from that. But what happens when you retire? Where is your value then? If our value isn't what we own and what we possess, what happens when we lose it? If a pitcher is known for his pitching and it breaks his arm and his arm is, is never recovers, then what good is he if that's where we see find our value? But Pope Benedict stepped down from being pope whether it's right or wrong whether you agree or not being a pope was not um everything he still had value but his his usefulness he thought he made this decision my usefulness at being um the pope is no longer i'm no longer useful we have to see that who we are and what we're doing in our and be willing to step down when we feel our usefulness is, is over and not feel that that mean, doesn't mean we're not still valuable. 
he didn't find all his value in being the leader of the Catholic Church. Um, I don't know if that's a good, um, <laughs> but it, it struck me that he was so willing to do that and not hold on to that title for the sake of the title because he felt that he was no longer able. He was willing to see that and step down. Um, just to, all that to say, sometimes we hang on to our position because that's where we see our worth. But Jesus, when we don't find ourselves of having value, we're going to go get value. We're going to find value. We're going to do whatever it takes to make ourselves valuable. And God's saying, you're already valuable. God doesn't want you to go take value. He wants you to receive the value that he's already given you. And you are valuable beyond measure. There's no reason to go seeking it. He wants you to know that you already are. We were baptized, priest, prophet, and king. My daughter and I went to see the movie. Um, anyways, it was about a princess. I can't remember. Princess Diaries. And when we left that movie, I said, I said to my young daughter at the time, I said, do you know that Princess Diana had just died? And I said, she was a princess in this world. We don't know where she is right now. I don't know her. I don't know where her faith was. I don't know if she's with God in heaven or not. And I said, but you, you are a real princess, Faith. Faith is my daughter's name. I said, Faith, you're a true princess. You're a princess in the kingdom of God, not just in this world. You're a princess in the kingdom of God. You're a true princess. And we were walking into the next to the movie theater is a, a hamburger place, a restaurant. And as we were walking in, I'm telling her this, as we were walking in, she was probably 10 or 12, four young teenage boys ran ahead of us and opened all four doors. There were four doors to get into that house. And we walked in like princesses and a queen. I will never forget that day. It was God just wanted to seal that. Yes, you are a princess. You are a prince. You are a king. You are a queen. Because the devil wants us to get value, but God has already given us a value. And I want to end with this. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver when he was on earth. That's what Judas paid, or they paid Judas. The Pharisees paid Judas for, for Jesus 30 pieces of silver. The 30 pieces of silver represented the price of a slave. I'm telling you this because God chose to become like a slave that you would become like a king, like a queen. God chose to become a criminal on a cross that you could be forever free. And we, when we don't know who we are, we live like we're still slaves to sin, slaves to this things of this world, slaves to the prince of this world. When God has rescued us. Amen. Amen. The truth, the truth, though, doesn't change. God's your value doesn't change. It's always that way. When you're good, you're still the same value to God. When you're bad, you're still valuable to God. Your value doesn't change like the stocks in the stock market. It doesn't go up and down. Your value is consistent because the value of Jesus never changes. I want to read one scripture verse from if I can find it from John 17. Okay, this is so this is Jesus praying. And he says, May they, he's talking about us, may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. You know, God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. If God was willing to give up Jesus for you, it's because he values you the way he values Jesus. Isn't that incredible? You, Jesus, I'm just going to read that, may, John 17, 23. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Jesus wants us to know that God the Father loves us as much as he loves Jesus. God doesn't have a different measure for you and a different measure for me. He measures us all based on the, the, the blood of Jesus, based on the price that he paid. And he proves his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He proved it forever by um, legally, forever and ever by taking that cross. Jesus didn't have to take the cross. He didn't, stay, he didn't have to stay in that cross. He chose to for you. 
he chose to for you and for me. Romans 8, 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Just establish it, establish it forever, your value. Don't go chasing after your value. Establish it forever. Can I say something? Here. Yeah, please. Uh, in, uh, in Florence, uh, there's the Academia. And in the Academia, there are some statues uh, which are unfinished. You know? uh, but they are so precious because of who made them. Because Michelangelo made them. And they are precious. They're not finished. They're all partly seeing slaves coming up out of the stone. But they are precious, not because they are beautiful. They are beautiful, but not, not, not for that. But because who made them? And we are beautiful because Jesus died for us and he and God, our father, made us. And this is precious for us, you know. We're That's great. Beautiful. God is our father. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. Amen. You are precious because God made you. Amen. Amen. Okay, I want to get into Galatians 3, uh, 26 through 29. And Galatians 4, 1 through 7. So really, we're going to do the end of Galatians 3 to the beginning of Galatians 4. Anyone want to start? Uh, Judy, we'll I've got it. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Verse 27. We are no longer Jews or Greeks or slaves or free men or even merely men or women but we are all the same. We are all Christians. We are all one in Jesus Christ. And now that we are Christ, we are the true descendants of Abraham and all of us and all of God's promises to him belong to us. Yeah. I love mm. Amen. I just want to comment on for now we are verse 26. For now we are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Who is the child of God? <laughs> Those who have faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ver Galatians 4, and then we'll, we can open it up for discussions. Let's just read through Galatians 4, 1 through 7. But remember this, that if a father dies and leaves great wealth for a little son, that child is not much better off than a slave until he grows up. Even though he actually owns everything his father had, he has to do what his guardians and managers tell him to until he reaches whatever age his father set. Verse three. So also, so also when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, Keep going. to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption. Mm. Mm. Six. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Seven. Seven, now we are no longer slaves, but God's own sons. And since we are his sons, everything he belongs to us, for that is the way God planned. Everything, amen. Everything he has belongs to us, for that is the way God planned it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone want to comment on that, on those scriptures? This is your turn. Well, you can't argue with that, can you? I mean, it's all there. You can't argue with it. It is pretty black and white, huh? Mm. <laughs> but we don't believe that. And I think this is why I brought this up is God gets a bad rap. We're blamed for everything. But when we're living in sin, living in the world, we get the things of the world. But we blame God. Why weren't you there? Why did you let this happen? And all the time. 
God's not simply just watching horrible things happen to us and being a party to it. It's um, we, we or our parents have chosen the, to live in the world. But anyone else that's, want to comment? That's, that's where John John, uh, John 10, 10 was coming mm. at me from every direction when I first took the first step on this journey um, into God's word. And it was the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. But I came that you might have life and have it abundantly because up to that point, because of my life experiences and I had my faith in God. Well, you know, I had my religion, I would say, rather than faith, because I realized further down the road, I didn't have any faith at all. I just had my religion um, that it was the devil that, that had come against me and done all, you know, and I experienced all these terrible things. God didn't do it to me, but I was, I was 42. It was only when I got into the word that the truth came to me, you know, Amen. Uh, so important. The word of God. So, so important. Amen. Anyone else want to comment? I just want to say that, um, you know, I always wonder why evil happens in the world, but I, I, I think, and I've heard that it's because God respects our free will so much that if someone's going to commit a murder, he's not going to come down and stop them from doing it. He respects our free will. And so all of the evil in the world is a consequence of sin not God's choosing, but yeah. man's Amen. fallen nature. We have to remember also that um, in Isaiah 51, verse 9 to 11, uh, God says that his word that goes out of his mouth will not return to him empty before it's fully what he has sent it to do. Mm. This is why we have to listen to the word and hear the word and let the word and illuminate on the word, meditate on the word, and then we become what the word is talking about. Amen. Amen. I just wanted Did to I... comment, sorry, just quickly. I just wanted to comment on the word heir because, um, you know, whenever um, the idea of being an heir to mm -hmm. um, a, uh, a kingdom, to being, to being an heir of a, of a foundation, of a, of a family, um, you know, trust or something is it's what's interesting is it's not something that you have to do. It's something that you're born into. You know, there's nothing, nothing you have to do about it. You're just because you're born, you're an heir of that family's riches, you know, whatever money estates. Wow. And um, the fact that we that are is awesome. <laughs> born into God's kingdom as heirs it's not anything that we did, wow. but it's something that we have to receive because if we, you know, you could be an heir of a family and not even know it and live your life just in a whatever mundane, uh, poor or whatever in, in you know, way. And, um, but if you know that who you are and you know, you belong to that family, come on, it's all yours. Woo. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well said. That is so good. Yeah. That's the problem. We don't, when you don't know, you're going to live like you're going to hear that devil and obey him. But isn't, and... isn't that his biggest, um, the biggest thing he wants is to try and stop us learning yes. what our true identity is. Amen. But he Amen. does not, he I, I, does not want Amen. us to wanna, know. Amen. Right. I want to go to Jackie. Go ahead, Jackie. I was just thinking, um, I was listening to a sermon the other day. And it was about whose voice are you listening to? Mm. Amen. And, you know, as people, we have like, I have anyway, all different arguments with different people in my head. Then I have the word of God. Then I have probably the enemy as well. Putting negative thoughts in my head. But I remember um, we need to know who we are in Jesus, Amen. what we are. We need to really, really know that. And it's some. I mean, I've been a Christian a long time now, and I'm still not there. I really am not there. None of and us are. I really am not. And I want to know it's what I seek with all my heart. Amen. Honestly, I could just like, I can't explain it, but I remember once, when I, when I met Jesus, I had this beautiful romance. He was like, it was unexplainable. And um, you know that song, um, 
and that he placed the stars in the sky and he knows them my name. He knew me and I knew him and we were in love. And it was like to me, it wasn't a love affair, but we were very close. I felt we were so close. And then I started to get sick. And this was a test for me. And I was like, why didn't you tell me this was coming? Why did you not tell me? Amen. And he gives us free will. Amen. And we have to make choices. Amen. And unfortunately, I made the wrong choice. And I know it was the wrong choice. You know, I just want to pick piggyback off that intimate God wants an intimate relationship with him and everything yeah. else out of that intimacy everything else comes and just to remain into an intimate relationship with him and out of that everything else what we're supposed to do where we're supposed to go um I want to get back into the word again so let's go into John 1 verses 10 through 13 and John 1, 10 through 13, if said. <laughs> he was not the word, and the word was made through him, and the word did not know him. Mm. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. We were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the, world, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace Amen. and truth. Amen. Well, I think... I think, I think verse 12 just really says it all, yes. that um, those who accept Jesus, who believe who he is, those are the ones who have the power or some, or you said the right to become children of God. It's all about faith and belief. Yeah. I mean, it's very clear in black and white. It's very clear. Amen. Anyone who hasn't commented want to comment? something you love about it you have a question this is my, one of my favorite scriptures the beginning of this it's just alive okay i think we we're going to go on to romans 8 i don't know how much time we have let's try i just want to do one more romans 8 i have uh two others past this but let's do romans 8 14 through 17 and we'll end here i right, have romans, i have romans, romans 14 14 eight. through 17, do all three verses. Okay, Four Romans verses. chapter eight, verse 14. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. And so we should not be like caring, fearful slaves, but we should behave like God's very own children adopted into the bosom of his family and calling to him, father, father, for his Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children. And since we are his children, we will share his treasures. For all God gives to his son Jesus is now ours too. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Yes. That's it. That's it. Thank okay. you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the Catholic version. For those who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then also heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Amen. Amen. Before we go into prayer, I just want to uh, offer up another time of if anyone has something on their heart they want to share or ask a question or just anything about today or the scripture. But my whole purpose is to show you we're not all children of God. We, through our baptism, we become children of God. But even then, that is not enough. We have to have faith. Even the by you know, our... The church even says this in our Christ Renews His Parish. It says, yes, we've been baptized, but at some point we have to make that commitment for Christ ourselves. 
And that is when we begin to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the power to live for him. And that's when we start living a different life. And but we have it's our choice. We have to choose it for ourselves. So our parents choose it for us at baptism, but we have to choose life for ourselves. And life is Jesus Christ. He is life itself. There is no life outside of Jesus Christ. So he is life and we have to choose it for ourselves. And that's when we become children of God. We're not just automatically born children of God. We have to be reborn and born of the spirit, not just of the flesh. Anyone else want to comment? Sorry, I didn't mean to. A, a Christian friend of mine described it as this, that God does not have any grandchildren. He has children, yeah. not grandchildren. So we can't run on, on the back of our parents' faith. We have to, as you say, we, we have to choose it ourselves. And I've often thought about confirmation. I don't know what, it, what, what age it is in the States, but it's about 11, 12 here. And I always feel that that should be 18, 19, where people can really comprehend mm. receiving the Holy Spirit and, and the faith that goes along with it. Because I didn't understand at that age. what You know, I don't think I did either, but we all have the chance to renew our confirmation. And we have a chance every mass to renew our, to renew our baptismal mm. vows, to mm. renew. Every time we go to communion, we're renewing our faith in Jesus Christ. So. Many years ago, Mary Beth. Um, hello, everyone. Hi, Good John. to see you all. Yeah. Uh, many years ago, I had gone back to university. I had done a degree in philosophy before, and uh, I was holding for court uh, with a group of undergraduates, and they were all talking about the big questions of life, God, and everything like that. So I was waxing lyrical. I was holding court telling them all about it. And on the periphery of the discussion was one of the chaplains. He was uh, one of the Protestant chaplains to the university. And he looked at me and he said, do you know Jesus Christ? So I started to talk about him. After I'd finished, he said, you know a lot about Jesus Christ. My question is, do you know him? It was a week later. I knew what he meant. Well, my, my spirit knew what he went, meant, what he meant. And a, a week later, uh, I committed my life to the Lord Jesus. Wow. Now, I was baptized and living a normal religious Catholic life, but um, with the ups and downs, of course. But uh, that day changed my life. Amen. And... Uh, we have the spirit. I mean, that's what it says in Romans. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. And uh, we have what I often call the abiding presence in us. Uh, remember, you were talking about John early on. And uh, he said, look, I have to go. Because if I don't go, he was telling his disciples, the spirit won't come. I have to go. So the father will send the spirit. I'll send the spirit. In you know chapters 13, 14, 15, 16 of John. And um, so he sent the spirit. And that's who dwells in each one of us. The abiding presence of the Lord. Great, great chapter. John 15. Abide with me as I abide with you. And he lives in us. Abide is living. And uh, it's a wonderful, well, Perfect, you know, the, I remember thinking myself about fear. And the Lord said to me, John, he calls us by name. Remember Isaiah? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, um, perfect love casts out fear. Amen. 1 John 4, 18. And he said, perfect love all all." dwells within you john it's not your love Ooh. it's the love of the spirit the holy spirit that is perfect love wow. so you turn to him and ask him to cast out this the fear that's so, so good it's we have it all 
<laughs> we have it all, all gift. Amen. 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 Oh yeah, back to about the age of that of uh, you know giving your life to for confirmation or um, first communion. I was raised Baptist. I didn't become a Catholic till I was adult. And in the Baptist church, uh, it's the age of reason that you become baptized so that you can understand uh, the word, you can understand who Jesus is and you can get to know Jesus. We had Sunday school every, every morning for the different class, you know, the different age groups. And, uh, and so everyone in our family was baptized. And I remember when I was baptized, I was um, 1965, I was, uh, uh, I think eight years old and uh, it's a complete dunking. And I mean, it was such a, you know, every time uh, at every service, they always call for people, you know, if you want to know Jesus, want to be baptized, but the children are not, you know, until the age of reason. And you just go up there with whoever and uh, who has made the decision. And it is so beautiful. You know, they give you a white gown and, you know, one baptism is good for, you know, all faiths. And uh, it was, it was beautiful. And just, and I'm so yeah. thankful for, for the teachings in the Baptist church, because they focus so much, so much on, on the, on the scripture. I mean, every single Sunday class was based on scripture and they, we talked about it. We learned it. We memorized the books of the Bible and uh, that was our faith. And I, even to this day, when I read the Bible, it's like, I learned that. It makes more sense now, you know, it's just beautiful. I'm so thankful that I have that basis, you know? So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, Mayor Beth, I just wanted to say something real quick. Um, You know, Kate was talking about, um, you know, that we have this trust fund and we have to be able to receive it and receiving such a, even in the first, uh, chapter of John, you know, but to all who received him, you know, he gave the power to become the children of God. So that's like something, everything else is done for us. Our one job is to receive him. And so, but that's why, that's why your teaching today was so important because one of the main, um, tools that the enemy uses for us not to receive him and to harden our heart to God's perfect love that will drive out the fear is this, um, you know, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of failure, you know, not knowing our worth and not knowing our identity. So, you know, knowing that our worth is made from both because he made us in his image and also because of what he paid on the cross for us. You know, those two things combined make, gives us our worth and nothing else but you know the enemy uses so many lies to you know not have us see that so we cannot receive you know our trust fund in jesus you know so i just wanted to say i just want to thank you because all the examples you used was perfect like the car in the picture i mean it really um just i understood it in such a you know deeper level so thank you praise god thank you praise god you know let's open mary beth justine has her hand up Hi, I just want to thank, I just want to claim a healing from last week. I'm seven days late. I'm sorry. But uh, Dr. John, um, you're praying for a healing of a pituitary tumor. And I've been praying for my daughter who has a pituitary adenoma. And I did not know that that was a tumor. So I claim it seven days later. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Can I, can I, can I just, um, you know, prayer, is, we see prayer as asking for things all the time, where very, you know, recently, I just keep thanking God and, and thanking, thanking him. And, and what happened this week, very special for our family, my eldest son, Dan, has spent 10 years studying. And on Tuesday, he was qualified as a solicitor in London. That's a lawyer in America. He, he got his, it, and my other son has decided to do study and he passed his exam on Friday and the blessings on my children. And I, and, and I put them down to the, my, their grandmother's prayer. She's a, a wee Irish woman in the West of Ireland with her rosary beads and she prays for all her grandchildren every morning. So it's a, a gratitude, a thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Thank What's you, Holy Spirit. 
for my my eldest is called Dan and my second one's called Aidan. And my God has so blessed both Amen. of my just children. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank, thank you. you, Father. We're thank you. the Lord with, with thank Lorraine. You, Lord. Yeah. Amen. I have a praise report. It's Margaret. Hey. So we went to Joshua Tree. I'm in Southern California for a couple months. And the other day we went to Joshua Tree. I was on my feet all day. All day day wow margaret walking hiking and it, and my feet are great wow. i'm just doing 30 minute race walking every day i'm just like praise god rebuking mm -hmm. and claiming it and in your face devil and you're hearing this Good. out loud and i'm putting go our margaret go our yeah. margaret go our thank Mar you thank you and awesome. one other question something john said earlier not not dr john but the other john who had to leave is the, does the Holy Spirit heal us or does Jesus heal us or both? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God that heals. Right. <laughs> right. But a lot of times. It's a team effort. <laughs> well, a lot of times we just read yesterday in, the, in our, was the Lord was there and the power of the Holy Spirit was there to heal. So the power to heal comes from the Holy Spirit too. So yes, definitely. Thank you. Go can, I, can I just jump off of uh, Margaret there? Because uh, we're both down here in Southern California about the, the praise and the Joshua tree. I mean, it was such a beautiful day and I couldn't believe how much walking. <laughs> I was like, I was, it was just a great healing. Um, God. You know, uh, awesome. she did more walking than I did. That's <laughs> you awesome. Know? I was like, praise God, wow. Margaret. What, what, a, what and, a victory. Uh, what, what a praise, praise you have. Glory. And from praise. all the prayer. I mean, Amen. I've done a couple other trips with Margaret and um, and, and no, she's seat. never walked like this before. I mean, she's... I can testify to that. Amen. This is Amen. beautiful. And lack of equality in the workplace. So I just like to pray for us to pray for all workplaces that people would be able to achieve their potential and be free from prejudice and discrimination. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've just had a sense that we are the light in the darkness. Amen. And in this world, there's not that many lights. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the Lord is well pleased with us. Amen. Well pleased that we are meeting in his Hi, name. John. That yeah. we're meeting in his name. And Amen. Declaring Jackie. his word. And I really feel that our cup is full and runneth over. And whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, Amen. he will give it to us. Amen. I'm serious about that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.